Hi, this is Ronald Johnson, your life coach, mentor coach. And what I do is I help people that are tired of who they are and where they are in life. And this is Gloria, your life coach. I help those who are feeling stuck, struggling with difficulties such as self-doubt, inner judgment, lack of confidence, life transitions, and taking steps forward. And welcome to Life's A Shuffle podcast. Now, you may wonder why it's called Life's A Shuffle. And the reason why we came up with this title was that life is really shuffling. And it doesn't matter where you come from, your background, what age you are, you're shuffling multiple things in life. And the best thing to know in life is everybody faces your struggles and everybody faces what you're going through. But there's hope in learning something about that. So when our guests share their journey, the hope is you learn something in that journey so yourself can navigate the struggles you face, the low self-esteem, the self-confidence. And that's why we call podcast Life's a Shuffle. And throughout this podcast, we share our personal overcoming stories, as well as our guests who shares their personal journey in overcoming their personal struggles. Life's a Shuffle podcast is here to connect like-minded individuals. And thank you for listening to Life's a Shuffle podcast. Hi, this is Gloria, life coach and a meditation coach. Welcome to another episode of Life's Shuffle. Actually, today is our episode three with Jesse Lucas. Yes, Jesse, welcome back. And this is Ronald Johnson, your life coach and mindfulness coach. And episode three, continuing in body movement. And today, Jesse is, is going to discuss release and realign. So, what does that mean, Jesse, in your business? Uh, Actually, hi. Sorry, yeah. cut you off. I think today is just release, right? Episode three is release. Release. Yeah. Okay, there we Let's go. Let's talk release. about release. Realign is going to have to have its own conversation because there, you know, my background is being a, a yoga teacher, I have a lot to say on that one. So let's let's save that one for, for the next segment. But I thank you both so much for having me back. Hello to everybody listening. We're getting some great feedback. Thank you for sharing your stories and please keep them coming. Uh, so just to catch you up, if this is the first time you are listening, I'm Jesse Lucas. I, my background is in being a yoga teacher, personal trainer, I've done some hands-on body work. And through through that work, I have been able to both experience for myself and see in my clients a lot of the under the surface changes that happen when we move our bodies with intention and with awareness. And I, over the course of my career, started getting more and more interested on being focused on what's actually happening under the surface and how we can use movement to positively influence and affect our emotional well-being and our mental health. So that's kind of the the ballpark. If you want to hear more about that and haven't caught up on the previous episodes in the series, that's uh, you can learn a whole lot more in those. So what we're leading up to with this release, Ron, to answer your question, like what does that mean in this work? The, let me put it this way. I mean, I may have even said this this phrase in another episode, you can't build new movement patterns on top of old ones. I think that's kind of what we had had been building up to in our previous conversations. So release is all about what does it really mean? Like when people say, oh, just let it go, just let it go. Like, what does that, I'm a practical person, y'all, I need to know like, what is it? How do we do it? And, And give me the benefits right away. So release could be how do I actually get this physical tension out of my body and so it does not come back? We are all walking around like stress balls these days, um, some more than others, some carry it differently. But one of the, the body's kind of physiological responses to stress, whether it's chronic stress over time or an acute kind of powerful stress situation, is your body tenses up. It's, it's part of the readiness to, you know, fight flight. We've talked about that on some of the other episodes. So it's a, it's a functional mechanism to be able to create tension. The unfortunate side effect that most of us are walking around with is that the stress and the tension never subside. And so we're constantly reactivating that, that tension and 
we have not been taught the tools to really release that tension. So on one hand, it is quite simply about how to actually effectively and continually release that that constant hold, that tension, which then starts to show up as um, you know pain in the body. I just came back from a, a quick cross country turnaround trip, and I've got you know a kink in my back from airplanes and sleeping in a different bed, and so I know like all right, I've got to do some some muscle release on on that spot. I can I can feel it. Um, but also just that baseline of what I call resting tension, even when we are kind of at our, at our best, whatever, but you know, life is good. Like, you know, it's maybe you're not dealing with any acute stressors. You're, you're doing all your positive things that you do. There's still a baseline of resting tension and it's possible to reduce that so that you have more, better fluid flow. I mean, let's just talk physiologically at this point, excuse me, better fluid flow, better um, nerve conductivity, better range of motion in your joints, all of those kinds of things. But all of those things, and and I'll, I'll kind of seed this for that realign conversation, when you can release all of those, that, that physical tension, you have more room to move in your body. Any physical misalignments that you may have going on, you know, scar tissue pulling you this way or bad posture habits or anything like that. This is what I mean by you can't build new movement patterns on top of old ones. You've got to release the tension holding those old icky patterns in place in order to be able to have the room to make, make the changes and bring you into that, that alignment. So we'll, we'll pick up on how do you realign in the next conversation But the relief that you gain, I'll I'll kind of wrap my answer to this question with this, the relief that you gain from being able to very, very simply and effectively start releasing some of that physical tension, you can breathe a little deeper. I mean, just naturally, just from, you know, releasing the constriction around your, the breathing mechanisms, but that breathing deeper, you're able to calm, you know, kind of regulate your nervous system better and feel at least a little more of the time instead of less of the time, little doses of calm. With those little doses of calm, you're able to kind of access some of the emotional resiliency required to release emotional tension, emotional pain, um, and then all the way up the, up the chain to those the mental stresses and strains and to be able to release the, you know, they say, um, you know, our, our brain patterns that fire together, wire together, to release the hold on some of the those hardwired brain patterns, thought patterns that have us kind of literally stuck in tension mode, stress mode, and release that hold, that grip on them. So you have the that level of neuroplasticity. I know that's a hot, hot topic word these days. Um, and begin to create some new neuro pat- neural patterns to 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 feel better mentally as well. So there's a loaded question, <laughs> Ron. What does yeah, what does yeah. release mean in this context? So I hope that gives you a, a bit of perspective. I, I want you to break it down from chunks. I, I always hear the word, you know, you talk to people that are mindfulness practitioners, meditation, uh, you know, um, they always say the word release. And first of all, what the hell do I need to release? Like, is it released <laughs> because I need to you know, throw up because I'm too full or does it mean that I need to get my body moving? Like, of course, it's a loaded question, but for our audiences, can we break it down by chunks? What do I need to release? Yeah, I love that you asked that because honestly, this is one of the things I, look, I'm a, I'm a fiery, stubborn Aries and I get cranky very easily. And in the mindfulness world. So my, my whole path in to, leading up to doing this work in, body, in embodied movement in reverse order, like personal trainer before that, yoga teacher before that, I learned meditation. That was my kind of first segue into this whole kind of embodiment world. And I would hear in that community, you know, release, let it go. And my very fiery, stubborn Aries self asked the same thing. 
what do I need to, what, what do you mean? And like all of the things that were going kind of wrong in my life, the, the things that were stressors and strains over time, like, like my anger and resentment towards uh, the abusive marriage that I was in, the things that happened to my kids that like, I mean, things that were like, they, they, they had a grip on me. I was like, I can't just wake up one morning and decide not to be upset about those things. If I could, like, if I could just quote unquote, let that go, if I could just release that anger, release that resentment, I would. I don't want to carry that around. It's, it's zapping my vitality. It's taking up my mental and emotional real estate, which I have high value. I mean, my mental and emotional real estate has high value. And physically, I'm getting less done because I'm all wrapped up in this anger and resentment. But people telling me, even people from the mindfulness space, release, release, let it go. I had a list. Like if someone said to me, all right, what do you need to release? What do you need to let go? I probably had, you know, a, a good top 10 list. And then there's this under the surface stuff. So first and foremost, what do you need to release is a very, very personal question. And one of my main premises in the embodied movement work is to take all of these wonderful things that we're learning from all of these great uh, kind of departments in, in self-care and holistic health and bring uh, upgrade them a little bit. I think everybody has their own their, their own stuff. So it's really about asking what is, what, what going on in my life, whether that's my thought patterns, my emotional status, my physical health, my lifestyle behaviors, the things I choose to do every day, the environment that I live in, which maybe somewhat I have some choice over, somewhat I don't, kind of taking a personal inventory and the, the kind of very simple dividing question I like to ask is, is this aiding in improving my health, my happiness, my well-being, my vitality, or is this taking away from my health, my well-being, my happiness, my vitality? If there's something on the list, you're kind of looking around and it is taking away then that might be something to figure out how to release. And it's in that figuring out, it's not just like, oh, these things I'm going to release. Whether it's something like anger, resentment, aggression, or like on that list, I also had a house. I had a house I didn't want to live in anymore. I needed to release that house, but obviously that was that was a process that took a, a few years to really prepare for and then execute. Um, and then take care of myself after after that big change. So what do you need to release? Ask, you can ask yourself that question. What in my life, do, do some self-inquiry. In yoga language, it's svadhyaya, self-study. Do some self-study. I like the concept of becoming a scientist of yourself and even like performing little, little micro experiments. Um, you know, if you think you're eating something that really is kind of maybe taking away from your vitality instead of improving. Experiment. It doesn't have to be a life sentence. <laughs> you can, you know, this is what scientists do. They kind of do something and see what happened and then adjust accordingly. So what do you need to release? I don't want to give you blanket answers. Um, I think that's not the, the correct approach. I think what do you need to release is a process of, of self-study to come up with those answers. So in, 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 in what you're trying to say is this. So there's something that's causing friction in your life. It can be a combination of uh, relationships, friendships, marriage, uh, environment, job, school, whatever, right? So you take an inventory of things you're in life. And the easy way to put it is which one do you most misalign with, right? Mm -hmm. And obviously, if you're, let's say you're in a marriage you don't want to be in, as an example, you can't just change it overnight. There may be other deciding factors. So what you do is probably bite off little bits and pieces, or I call it breadcrumbs, one by one, to help change the amount of, of friction. Because friction can be very overwhelming, right? So you don't want that degree of swing be too much. But if you start doing one thing at a time, that's you can digest. Because you say, I want a divorce, let's say an example, it may not be just like that. It may take years to get a divorce or whatever. 
hard to leave your spouse, but just doing small things create bigger changes, right? I love that you just said that. Actually, the the trip I was just on that uh, if, if my voice is a little raspy, it's because I have hotel air and airplane air <laughs> in my lungs. But the whole theme of this conference was the little things. And I was breathing huge sighs of relief. Hearing that all of the stories I heard, the examples, the the trainings, all of it coming back to the little things is I, you know, for me, I'm also a big thinker, big doer, maybe with that Aries fire, I kind of jump hard, jump fast, do, do big things, but it is. So, you know, to, to use that example, uh, you know, none of us on this call here, we're not lawyers, we are not doctors, we're not giving, you know, legal advice, medical advice, psychologist, you know, psychological advice. But so in preparing for a bigger change, like if you know, for sure, if you make your top 10 list, top five list, top three list, top number one list of, of what needs to be released. And you have something really big at the top of that list. And you know, like you are not going to be able to find ease and presence and live as yourself unless this big thing changes. Yeah, absolutely. Break it down. Maybe there are you know, all the way down to little things of like, how are you going to uh, create the resiliency to make a bigger change? So maybe it's you do a five minute stretching session in the morning or at night, like even like before you get out of bed after or, you know, when you get back into bed before your head hits the pillow so that you're releasing the physical tension that might be accumulating with approaching a bigger change. Maybe it's you make a little change, like a couple of days a week, switching from coffee to green tea or, you know, hot lemon water, something that's a little more soothing to your adrenals and your nervous system. So that as you're approaching a big change, you have, you've, you've released some of the friction. I love that we keep using that word going on in your physiology that when when you are trying to make a big change, you kind of go into a greater state of arousal. That's how your your stress response works. So doing a little change, like in what your morning warm beverage is, to support your system through that. And little by little, one little thing at a time, you can be almost reforming from the inside out to be able to then release the bigger thing without completely falling apart, breaking down, making yourself sick in the process. Um, So yes, big kind of rock your world changes. The next level of being a scientist of yourself is to find out what are the little things that will help support the release. Because that's the other side of release is is support. If you take away the infrastructure of a building, it will fall down. If you put up the scaffolding first and start to kind of consciously deconstruct, you can leave the good bones. So good little thing type of practices to support bigger releases is crucial. So I've got a question. So we talk about um, the connection of the mind and the body here so that what it is that if you have something in mind would you say that it's not just in your mind that it's that it's also something you feel in your body absolutely that and that's all tied together yes go ahead yeah so now we talk about releasing if you're releasing something physically how would you also release what you have in your mind at the same time because if it's tied together Mm-hmm. And how how would how would I or one would release what's in my mind and what I feel physically at the same time? I just was tuning into a, a, a whole summit on trauma, and I forgot who it was, but one of one of our like really top top leaders in the trauma field described trauma like this. He said, "Trauma isn't something that happened to you in the past." It is how you are continually and currently reacting 
to it. So trauma is now. So I thought, I think that's a really good way to kind of understand this mind body connection. So I'll, I'll use this example to, to answer your question. You had a traumatic experience in the past. It doesn't matter if it was yesterday, last year, or a few decades ago. And you have, you're, you still have reactions going on, whether that's, um, you know, the fight, flight, or freeze mode, how, you know, the, the whole guarding and tension and pain and emotional turmoil and mental strain, all of it. All of that is happening now in your body. So as you address those things, and let's break it down to the little things again, you start to do things to release the tension in the body, like those five minute stretching sessions, or go start taking a, a, a yoga class, or get more massages, or do some good self myofascial release. That's one of my favorite tools with, um, I mean, there's, there's great products out on the market or great kind of DIY things you can just do with, with your own hands, your own body. And then you start doing things to tone up your nervous system, like take away things that rev up your adrenals, do things to support kind of soothe and, and toning nervous system techniques. Like I said, get off the coffee, get on the, the hot lemon water, like that kind of thing. If there's, and if there are foods that uh, you know, you, you get inflamed or your, your gut gets irritated when you eat them. That's all that much more physical resources going into kind of working on those physical processes, which means less resources going towards healing and nourishment. So you could make little tiny changes over time on those kinds of things. The more you do that, the more you're going to be reclaiming energy that's going into your body trying to deal with pain and strain. And as you reclaim that energy and that those energy resources in your body, that's going to work on reducing inflammation, the energy that's going into holding those muscles in constant contraction for physical tension. As you reclaim that energy, you are going to feel that uplift. You're going to feel like you have more energy. That energy that you feel is going to feel like energy like, oh, I got this. Oh, I have more clarity around this now. Oh, mm -hmm. I don't have to walk around carrying XYZ event that happened to me. I can now archive that. It doesn't erase. I'm not suggesting things get get erased, but they can be archived instead of activated. As those things emotionally and mentally in that through this mind body connection are still activated, they are still creating pain, whether that's physical pain, emotional pain, mental stress and strain. As you reverse engineer that and start to bring soothing to the heal the, the your physical body and reclaim that energy, that energy goes into, you, you have two systems in your body, rest and repair and fight and flight. If those energy resources are going to fight and flight, they're not going into rest and repair. So your job is to reclaim that through all of those things I just said, and you will feel it. You will feel that rest and repair, and then you will have the capacity to do things that you did not have the capacity to do, not because you are less than, but because those energy stores were going into a different system and now you have them to use over here and you will be able to function differently. You will be able to do the kinds of emotional transmutations, changing, you know, making them malleable, changing their form, you know, the, the pain into something powerful. And like I said, the, I think the most simple way to kind of understand it is that these things, even though they may not go away, they become archived instead of activated. Yeah. I like that because, you know, sometimes I'm thinking about those, or I know I've, I've had these feelings before when you start to feel everything all at once, you then start to feel kind of numb 
or like Mm -hmm. your body just feels paralyzed because of all that when you feel like you're feeling all the feelings and and you just get numb and then you're just stuck so I like that and what I got out of that is I think more so to instead of listening to myself maybe talking to myself Mm, that's a good one too right like I can actually do this so why not do this Like, like what Jesse was saying earlier oh this actually works. I'm able to do this because when I'm listening to myself, sometimes I tell myself, I can't do that. That This is how I am. I'm stuck here. But then when you start actually making some actions, then you start talking to yourself more about it and telling yourself that you can, that then it is possible to actually move from that. That's really beautiful um, because we, we just don't give ourselves enough, enough permission to really um get in tune with what we want we try to say we can't so most of the time we talk ourselves out of it um like i remember there's two things i'll touch on beginning of this year um for those of this my podcast i used to take steroids because the idea was that if i got my body stronger i would get mentally stronger and the beginning of this year i just went cold turkey and i can go into scientific reason why it's not good to do that and whatever but the idea was i just got sick and tired of doing that I got sick and tired of taking all these um, drugs to help me my body stay a certain way, look a certain way, because I want to be a certain way. When I actually released those from having hold on me as in control, I felt like I got back control of my life. And it's been almost a year. So I started the first January 1st of this year, and now we're almost into November. I feel so much better. I got back my control. Second thing is I'm starting school in eight days. I'm super afraid about starting school. And I was getting really overwhelmed with anxiety. And I said to myself, you can do this. Just it's one, it's one bite at a time. And listen, what Jesse's saying is that all these events that happen is important to not just celebrate the fact you're getting through them, but it's also important to realize you have permission to get through them. And like the lawyer just said, ask yourself the question. Like, so while I was looking at school, I'm going to fail. It's going to be overwhelming. I started saying to myself, I can do this. I can get through it. Your little story there just made me so happy. First of all, I'm so happy you're off the steroids. Um, <laughs> that made me so happy. <laughs> but um, that you just kind of brought what Gloria said to to life, and um, I I think a good way to kind of start wrapping this up and bringing it home is it it's it's a two way street, and it's not it's even it's more than a two way street. It's 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 a kind of constellation that, that kind of cycles. And part of it is the listening. You know, that's kind of what we were talking about in the previous episode is kind of opening up your awareness to the landscape of your body, body, mind, and what information does it have to provide under that numbness? That numbness, I kind of think of like as a white noise machine, like there's so much information kind of coming through your body systems, information from the inside stuff that you are storing and holding on to, you know, that, so if we're talking release here, you know, you have your, your body is your biology is your biography. All, all of the information stored from what anything you've gone through, plus the crazy noise coming from what life here in 2021 is like all you know our constant social media feed the news the our responsibilities that the expectations of us today are constantly changing day by day i know that you know i flew for the first time in two years the rules were different than they were two years ago and so all of this information that we have to process and become the numbness so once you open up and you're able to kind of turn down the volume of that that's kind of so much noise happening from within and from out without at once it kind of just it it all blocks out and you can get the information from this landscape of your body listening is a huge part of it what what is what what is the information going on but the other part of it is the action the taking responsibility and i know that can be a heavy word if you're already feeling overloaded Uh, taking responsibility, but when you can do so in in an embodied way with the steps of creating safety and little, you know, little things to start that release process, 
you are gathering little, little droplets, little ice cream scoops of energy so that you can take the responsibility. And then when you do take the action part saying like, you know what, I can do this. The, the things you are, are speaking back into your life experience, they aren't disconnected. This is where things like if you just kind of, uh, you know, borrow some affirmations from elsewhere, like, you know, Ron with your anxiety with the, with the school, like I am smart and I am, I am, you know, whatever they are. If you're just borrowing them, they're not going to have any resonance. And you're just like, you know, talking, you're, you're talking to that guarded layer. But if, if you have done the kind of opening up the space first and done the listening, even if it's just the tiniest little ping on the map and you say, you know what? I got this. It's going to resonate with that tiny little ping and then be able to grow from there. Then you're going to have something to go on. Then when you, you know, you go to, to, to start the school and you're going to be like, you know what, what is, what's going to give me the most brain power today? Is it this or that? You know, is it the, the energy, the drink, or the nootropic? Is it the salad or is it the bagel? Is it the, you know, like all of the little things. And you're going to be able to be like, remember when you said, I got this. And have your little thing decisions come from there. And that's when we start getting into realign because now we have, we have taken all that volume down a notch. We have the room to move. We've created some resiliency within our body and we can start making some very powerful adjustments. But um, I'll, I'll wrap with that and saying that the listening is so important, but the action, the taking responsibility from a nourished place, from an embodied place. And it's not just saying like, oh, I should feel nourished right now. Cause look, if you're overwhelmed, it, that, that nourishment isn't gonna come in, in like one giant package. I remember my house that I had, the one that I needed to release, I wanted so badly, you know, those TV shows where like just a big, you know, the crew, they send you on vacation, a crew comes in, they redo everything and you show back up to the house and there's a, like a big bus in front of the house. So you can't see it. And then the, you move the bus and everything's better. Like that's not <laughs> how nourish. I, I wanted it. I don't remember. I don't have TV, so I don't know what it's called, but I like remember seeing little episodes here and there. I wanted that to happen so badly. And I wanted that to happen on the level of release and nourishment. I didn't even want that to just happen with, with my house that I had. I wanted it to happen in the house of my body, in the house of my brain, in the house of my so damaged emotions. It's not how it goes. Yeah. But those little things, when you can start dropping into release, dropping into action, dropping into release, dropping into action. And you start weaving together this new alignment, which we will, we will talk about next time, but take those little scoops where you can, where you can start creating them little by little. I like that. It's all about taking that action. Yeah. I will say this, yeah. you know, one thing I learned when I had my first life coach, he says, the only way to beat fear, right? Whatever you're facing is action. Mm -hmm. Because what happens, it's like a snowball effect. Once you take one action, you go to the second action, third action, fourth action, fifth action, you know you're running because you have built that confidence to take, you know, action with fear. That's the only way to beat fear or keep from being in a state of, um, I call this paralyzed. You know, you go through something, you become paralyzed, but taking small action steps will get you unstuck so you can start running and do what's best for you. So thanks again, Jesse, uh, for episode three on release. I can't wait to hear realignment because I'm really realigning myself. New Year is coming. Things are happening. So those out there, you guys can find Jesse is in embodymovement.com, uh, correct? Embody Embody. Movement training. Embodymovementtraining.com. Perfect. You guys heard it. Embodymovementtraining.com. <laughs> Connect with her. And there's a lot of things you can release, right? New Year's coming. So get ready. And again, thanks again, Jesse. And this is Ronald Johnson your mindfulness coach and life coach and welcome to another episode of Life's a Shuffle. Yes, again, thanks, Jesse. And let's not focus on things that we can't control. I think let's focus more on things that we can control or that we have control of. Again, Jesse, thank you for another um, episode or series of Embodied Movement, episode three. Thanks, everyone. Thank you.